All right, here with Locked On Panthers host Julian Council. Julian, so much to get to as the Panthers wrap up the season. Their fifth straight, unfortunately, without a playoff appearance. But let's start with Steve Wilkes, six and six as interim coach. Owner David Tepper said he'd have to do an incredible job. So did he? Yeah, it's very clear he did an incredible job. We've known that for weeks now, if not over a month, to get this team that was 1-4 when he took over after week five when they fired Matt Rule to being what he said at the doorsteps of a playoff berth. 6-6, six and six, I thought he did an incredible job by establishing an identity offensively and defensively, bringing back the mantra of keep pounding. Matt Rule always talked about the brand, the process. That's always going to be keep pounding in this city, and Steve Wilkes understands that. So absolutely, he did an incredible job, and I think it's clear – that he should be the top candidate heading into this head coaching cycle over the next couple weeks and potentially month. You think it's clear, but what does David Tepper think? And that, that's what it comes down to, that's right? That's what we all want to know. Is it philosophical? I mean, if, if Wilkes had helped this team set records for passing in a game and not running, are we even having a debate about this right now? Isn't he the guy? I mean, is it something where maybe David Tepper wants something different than has succeeded here in the past? Sure. It's interesting to me because I've had people complain to me about, I don't want to watch this offense with Wilkes and running the football I'm sorry, 570 yards of total offense, franchise record against Detroit, that's not good enough for you. He was able to do that with Ben McAdoo calling the plays, Sam Darnold as the quarterback, and Chris McCaffrey was no longer here. Robbie Anderson was no longer here, and they had that kind of success. That just shows a coach who understood the strengths of his team and the weaknesses and balanced those to winning football games, six of the last 12 games that they played, and having success that way. So I don't really know what David Zephyr is thinking. There's comments out there, uh, there's reports out there that he wants an offensive guy, that he wants a seasoned veteran head coach. Well, you have a veteran right now in Steve Wilkes. You have a guy who knows what it takes to win in this league and has seen success here in Carolina. So if David Tepper is looking for a winner, I think he already has one right here. All right, under a minute to go, Julian. At 7 10, finish means the Panthers pick ninth. We know they want a quarterback <laughs> at, in some form or fashion. Do you think they could trade up to get somebody? They can, and I know the question is going to be, should they give up the farm to trade up to number one with the Chicago Bears, who already have their quarterback in Justin Fields, to be able to take, presumably, Bryce Young out of Alabama. I don't know if I'm there yet, but I thought even if they – the Texans would have gotten number one pick. The Panthers are going to have to trade up. Whether they won on Sunday against New Orleans or lost, they were going to have to use the assets that they traded away with uh, traded um, Christian McCaffrey to San Francisco for to likely move up into the top four, top three. I thought Seattle might be the team. Now that Seattle's behind Indianapolis can kind of make it difficult. So we're looking at Arizona as a likely trade partner if you don't want to give up a lot for the Bears. So, yeah, I think if they want to get their quarterback, which should be a rookie, in the first round, either Bryce Young or C.J. Stroud at Ohio State, they're going to need to trade up, and that's the best path forward for this team to find the guy to finally stabilize the position and lead whoever the next head coach is into a proper direction of actually bringing the sustained success that David Tepper promised us when he fired Ron Rivera three years ago. Julian, let's continue to talk about the draft. At number nine, I mean, that's a bit of a precarious position when you want to draft a homegrown quarterback, and the consensus is there's only two, C.J. Stroud and Bryce Young, or if you – believe Tom Luganbill that Will Levis is in that conversation. Sure. Those guys are going to go in, in the top end. I mean, wh where do you think the philosophy is for Scott Fitter and the staff going in at number nine? I think they're going to say best player available, but we're really not going to know until free agency plays out. Now, if the draft is before free agency, certainly it would be looking at getting a quarterback. Maybe you would say edge rusher, maybe a corner, because they certainly could use some help in both those areas, at least opposite of Brian Burns with a pass rusher, something they failed to get last year in the offseason, and in corners seeing the injury to J.C. Horn and Dante Jackson and the kind of impact that had on the season late. C.J. Henderson, Keith Taylor, probably not those guys you want to depend on next season if you get in that position. But I'm thinking that their thought is, all right, Scott Fitter told us when he first got here, in on every deal. He's going to have to be in on a certain deal there in the top ten to move up. Now, don't get me wrong. The Carolina Panthers can still get a quarterback if they stay there at nine. I just don't think it's going to be Bryce Young or C.J. Stroud. Those clearly to me are the top two guys who are probably going to be gone to either Houston or Indianapolis before Carolina is even on the clock. You could get Will Levis, who a lot of people like Mel Kiper Jr., ESPN, they like, and even Anthony Richardson. The guy's a stud, but also it's going to be a pretty big learning curve for him to be ready to play in the NFL on day one, not even, even day one of his second year in the NFL. So they can get a quarterback. I don't know if they're going to get the quarterback if they sit there at nine. Well, you know, the, the last three years, the philosophy has been chase the top flight free agents, 
lose out, and yeah. then end up with Bridgewater, Baker, and Darnold. I so mean, Tom Brady this year? <laughs> yeah. Do they adjust that philosophy? Let's take Tom Brady probably out of the picture. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, you know, you're, you're talking about a potential of Lamar Jackson. I mean, it, that's kind of a pipe dream for some people. Is there some alternative kind of Derek Carr, Trey Lance option that you think they might chase down somebody else? I guess there's Trey Lance you could potentially trade for, depending on how things go here with San Francisco. If Brock Purdy, Mr. Irrelevant, wins the Super Bowl for them, I guess he's their guy. <laughs> I have no idea what Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch and the 49ers brass are thinking, depending on what happens over the next month in the NFL playoffs. There's also Jordan Love in Green Bay. Yep. Aaron Rodgers, there was after Sunday Night Football. He didn't want to give his jersey away to Jameson Williams. He was saying, I want to keep this one. Is he gone? Is he staying? I don't know, but that's going to be a conversation if Aaron Rodgers comes back, whether you trade for Jordan Love. I just don't want to see the same thing the Carolina Panthers have done that has failed them the last couple of off seasons of, hey, let's sign this veteran or this guy who failed elsewhere as a top pick, and let's hope it works out. Teddy Bridgewater, totally was fine with that, as long as you had a plan to eventually bring a rookie quarterback. But David Tepper, the owner here, said, I don't have the patience for that plan. That failed to get, um, they failed to get Matthew Stafford, of course, Deshaun Watson the first time, led to Sam Darnold, of course, led to Baker Mayfield. I just don't think that's going to help this team win moving forward and have that sustained success. So the best path forward is just have the philosophy of drafting a guy and developing him. And that's what Scott Fitter said on Monday. When speaking to the media that we just need to go the conventional route, get a guy, develop him. Matt Corral, maybe he's that guy. But I don't think this organization, when they traded up last year in the third round to get Matt Corral, really thought he was going to yeah. be the long-term guy. Well, I mean, if they stay at nine and it's best player available and it's not a quarterback or a quarterback who's ready, do you pursue somebody like Carr? Because the rest of your roster seems close to being a playoff team. It depends on who the coaching staff is. And Fitter said that as well on Monday that – Got to get the head coach first, and then the co head coach is going to be key in the decision-making of who to bring at quarterback. And we saw that with the last guy, and Matt Rule, and certainly didn't work out in the two guys that he wanted, the last one being Baker Mayfield, who had a shortened preseason and opportunity to get ready for the season, which I think impacted his play. I don't know. I don't really love the idea of Derek Carr. I think he's a fine quarterback. I just don't think he's the guy. And David Tepper said that you want to get someone who can help hoist the Lombardi trophy, down trade and try on. Is Derek Carr going to do that? Because Mark Davis out in Las Vegas doesn't think that. And I think a lot of NFL owners and the rest of the league also feel the same way. So what's the point in getting a quarterback that, yeah, he can get you to the playoffs, but is he the guy? I think Carolina looking for the guy right now. Sure, Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud, any of your rookies, not quite sure they're going to develop into that. But we kind of know who Derek Carr is at this point in time to where I don't think there's that much upside for Carolina to bring in a Derek Carr. Let's wrap up with one more question about Steve Wilkes. You think he's the guy. Many others do as well. Is there anybody else out there that you could be sold on? If it's not Steve Wilkes, this is somebody that could take this team, build off the momentum that they just had over the last six or 12 games, yeah. and carry it into next year and get this team to ultimately where it needs to go. I don't think I love the idea of Frank Reich. I think it could work. I don't necessarily think I love it. I can be talked into it. Jim Harbaugh, he's been great. I know Panther fans are going to be like, oh, he's a college coach. Like, guys, did you forget? 44-19-1 with San Francisco. His first three years went to the NFC title game. One of them went to the Super Bowl. Every time they lost in the playoffs, it was to the eventual Super Bowl champion. I could be on board with Jim Harbaugh. I just wonder if he can come in here and be collaborative because it doesn't really feel like that's going to yeah. be the case with Harbaugh and how he operates, and he really wears out his welcome after a couple years, which led him back to Michigan after the successful tenure four years there in San Francisco. Leslie Frazier is an offensive guy. He's been a head coach before. That could make sense. I wouldn't be opposed to that. I don't love the idea of like a Shane Steichen who, yes, he's been around quarterbacks like Jalen Hurts now and Justin Herbert, but hasn't been in a coordinator role long enough. Ben Johnson, who from Asheville, North Carolina Tar Heel quarterback, at least a walk-on, uh, he is the OC of the Lions offense. That was great this year, but it's his first year as an OC. I want someone who's going to be a leader. So if we're going to get a leader and someone has experience as a coordinator that's not a former head coach, D'Amico Ryans out in San Francisco. And we've seen Mike McDaniel have success his first year um, with the uh, Miami Dolphins come from there. Robert Sala hasn't necessarily worked all that much with the Jets, but it's also the Jets. And I think they might have something there if they ever get a quarterback. So I could, I could be sold with D'Amico Ryan, someone who's played this league at a high level, coming with this defense. I think he would have probably bring the Shanahan system. I could get on board with D'Amico Ryans if it's not going to be Steve Wilkes. I could probably get on board with, you know, Jim Harbaugh and maybe even uh, Frank Reich. Just wouldn't be my top option. If it's not Wilkes, 
I'll take the Miko. All right, Julian, you have joined us for 18 uh, weeks. It's been a roller coaster. We thank you for your time. Uh, next time we see you, we'll be uh, talking about whoever that head coach is going to be. What do you say this time next year we're sitting here previewing an actual playoff game? That would be, nice. be nice, but that's also <laughs> probably too much to ask. <laughs> oh, no.